Rap is a genre that originates in the streets, and therefore crime is a common subject in music. Some rappers talk about past crimes, while others rap about things they've seen or just imagined. There's also a third category of rappers who talk about real events going on in the streets while they record their music. Here are some of the most popular rappers who snitch on themselves and their own music. YNW Melly Jamel Maurice Demons, aka YNW Melly, is a rapper and singer from Gifford, Florida. Melly is best known for his deep, emotive singing voice and breakout tracks like Murder On My Mind and Mixed Personalities featuring Kanye West. Melly's career was on fire and he was in a good position to become one of rap's biggest up and coming stars until he was arrested for a double murder in February 2019. Two of his closest friends and co-founders of the YNW Collective, Anthony YNW Sack Chaser Williams and Christopher YNW Juvie Thomas were killed back in October. Melly and the fourth member of YNW, Cortland Henry, also known as YNW Portland, originally claimed that the two were killed in a drive-by shooting. However, authorities claim that there is substantial evidence to prove Melly and Portland killed their friends and conspired to make it look like a random shooting. Melly has denied the accusations and has entered a not guilty plea. However, the case is yet to go to trial. After Melly was arrested, fans began to look back at his music for clues as to whether the artist is truly capable of murdering his childhood friends in cold blood or if it is just a conspiracy to put a rising rapper behind bars. Fans have noticed shocking similarities between the lyrics to Murder On My Mind and the events that unfold in real life. The song was originally written in 2016 and released in 2017, and the crime he's accused of committing occurred in 2018, so it can't be a straight up confession. But the plot of the song and the events that unfolded have eerie similarities that show perhaps Melly was capable of such a crazy murder. In the song, Melly describes shooting a close friend and holding him in his arms as he bleeds out. In the song, Melly says, Yellow tape around his body, it's a fucking homicide. His face is on a t-shirt and his family traumatized. I didn't mean to shoot him, he just caught me by surprise. I reloaded my pistol, cocked it back and shot him twice. According to police, the killing of YNW Juvie and Sack Chaser was no accident. It was a premeditated murder. Neither of the two snuck up on him because he's accused of having shot them from the back seat. But Melly continues by saying, I told him it's too late my friend, it's time to say goodbye. And he died inside my arms, blood all on my shirt. Melly claims that he was locked up for gun charges and drug possession at the time he wrote the song. However, the chilling nature of the lyrics and the detail he gives about watching his friend die may have led many to believe that if he didn't kill Sack Chaser and Juvie, he may have killed a friend in the past. Another detail that has led many to speculate that he may have committed the crime is a handshake that he performs in the video for the song. Melly is allegedly a member of the Bloods. In a documentary released to his YouTube, just a few weeks after the shooting, Melly performs a crazy blood handshake with YNW Juvie. In the video for Murder On My Mind, he performs the same handshake with the friend he accidentally killed. The video, which now has over 425 million views on YouTube, was released in August 2018, two months before Juvie and Sack Chaser were killed. So while Murder On My Mind isn't a straight up confession, it does reveal that Melly clearly has either thought about or potentially committed the murder of a close friend. The case is still ongoing and Melly maintains his innocence. The trial has been delayed due to coronavirus, which Melly himself contracted while in prison. There's a lot that is yet to be revealed in this case and it may be a while before the facts come to light. But for now, internet investigators are using his past lyrics to search for clues. But Melly isn't the only up and coming rapper to snitch on themselves. This next rapper spent seven years in prison after rapping about real crimes being committed in the streets of Brooklyn. Let's get right into it. Bobby Shmurda Aquil Jean Pollard, better known as Bobby Shmurda, is a rapper and convicted felon born in Miami but raised in Brooklyn, New York. Shmurda is best known for his hit song Hot Nigga as well as his signature Shmoney Dance. But like YNW Melly, just as Bobby was reaching the top of the charts, he was arrested for crimes that he committed while his career was heating up. Bobby grew up primarily in a rough part of Brooklyn called East Flatbush. He was allegedly a member of the G-Stone Crips and part of a gang slash music crew called GS9. Bobby's breakout hit was the track Hot Nigga, a remix of Lloyd Banks' song Jackpot that was released in 2012. Bobby released the video in August 2014 and was arrested along with 14 others just a few months later for a slew of charges, including conspiracy to commit murder, reckless endangerment, and drug and gun possession. Bobby, what do you have to say to your fans? Bobby, anything? After a long legal battle, Bobby eventually accepted a plea deal for one count of third degree conspiracy and one count of weapons possession. He was sentenced to seven years in prison and was just recently set to be released. Although the lyrics to his song were not direct evidence used against him in court, the song did allow police to string together a case that GS9 was more than a music crew and was a violent street gang. 
Here's a look at some of the lyrics that got Bobby hemmed up. In the song Hot Nigga, Bobby raps, I'm truly on some hot nigga. Like I talk to Shiesty when I shot niggas. Shiesty was Bobby's childhood friend who was gunned down by a rival gang called Brooklyn's Most Wanted or BMW in 2011. This led to a violent beef between the G-Stone Crips and the BMWs. Police used this line to prove that Bobby was involved in the conflict. Bobby continues by saying, and Monte keep it on him, he didn't drop niggas. Nicholas Monte McCoy was one of the members of GS9 who was arrested along with Bobby and police used this line to prove his affiliation with the gang. Later in the song, Bobby says, I'm a trigger, I'm a rusher, I'm a A-Rod. Broad daylight and we gon' let them things bark. Rashid Rasha Derrison and Alex A-Rod Crandon were suspected to be involved in the killing of a 19-year-old member of the BMW back in February 2013. They were caught on a surveillance camera, running into a bodega, and letting things off in broad daylight. Just like Bobby says in the song, they received some of the harshest sentences of any of the GS9 members, with Rasha getting 98 years and A-Rod getting 53. The most damaging line is also the most famous when Bobby raps, Mitch caught a body about a week ago. The Shane Mitch Cockett is another member of GS9 who was accused of shooting at a group of BMW members on East 52nd Street in Brooklyn and hitting a 22-year-old female bystander in the neck. The woman survived, but Mitch was charged with attempted murder in the second degree. Police used this line to convict Mitch of the shooting. Check out our video on the lyrics that got Bobby Schmurder arrested for a more in-depth look at the lyrics in the case. The evidence against the GS9 crew was pretty damaging and ultimately, they all ended up doing time. Even though Bobby was not guilty of committing some of the more serious crimes, he was painted by prosecutors as the right leader and responsible for orchestrating the crimes. He could have taken a lighter plea, but he agreed to seven years to ensure Rowdy Rebel and Monte got a similar sentence. Because he remained true to the street code and never snitched, Bobby has become a modern legend in New York hip-hop. As of February 23rd, 2021, Bobby's out of jail and a free man. Only time will tell if he can stay out of trouble or if he'll get sucked back into the street life. But Bobby Schmurter isn't the only young rapper to self-snitch. The next artist almost ruined his career with a questionable lyric in an unreleased track. Let's check it out. Rich Homie Quan. The Quantez Devante Lamar, known by his stage name Rich Homie Quan, is a rapper and singer from Atlanta, Georgia. Quan originally got mainstream attention for his song Type of Way and his association with Young Thug and Rich Gang. He grew up in Atlanta, Georgia and had an interest in creative writing and music from an early age. He got a job at a nearby airport after dropping out of college and began to pursue his music career. But after he was fired, he took to the streets to support himself and ended up serving a 15-month sentence for burglary. After he was released from prison, he started taking music seriously. He released Type of Way in August 2013 and Lifestyle with Young Thug in 2015, both of which made his career red hot. But just as Rich Homie Quan was taking off, a questionable lyric from an unreleased track caused a major controversy that almost derailed his career. In May 2015, 100 plus unreleased Rich Gang songs were released to the internet illegally by a hacker. Among them was a track called I Made It featuring Young Thug. On the track, Quan says, I don't want your hoe, just want the coochie from her, how you gonna tell me no? You know who I am. Many saw this lyric to be condoning rape, and Quan found himself in a major controversy. He later apologized for the bar, claiming that it was in bad taste and that it was never supposed to leave the studio. However, only a few weeks later, another track was leaked with an even more obvious reference to rape. In the song Day One, he raps, Chances ain't shit if you don't take one. Mansion full of bitches, about to rape one. This track was part of the same batch of unreleased songs that got leaked, but it came out a few weeks later than the others, which reignited the controversy. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Quan reflects on the situation and says that he knows the lines weren't cool. He says that the songs were just unfinished reference tracks that he recorded years prior and that he would never have released them himself. He blames it on the fact he was young and just saying wild shit to be cool, but that Missy crossed the line. No females ever came forward to accuse Quan of rape, and therefore, he was never charged with anything of that nature. But the controversy did slow down his career.